Okay, we're back. We're going to now talk about the final category of uh, writing formulas and naming compounds, and that category is acids. Now, just as a refresher, we did ionic compounds, we did covalent compounds, and now we're uh, moving on to learning how to name and write formulas for acids. Now, later in the year, we're going to study acids in a greater bit of detail, or excuse me, in much more detail. But now, all you need to do is learn how to write their formulas and name them so we can include them when we learn how to write chemical equations, which is coming up very soon. Now, there are two different kinds of acids for naming and formula writing. They are either binary acids, and you guessed it, they're made up of only two elements, one of which is hydrogen. And then there are ternary acids, made up of more than two elements, one of which is hydrogen again. Now, ternary acids we are also going to call oxy acids. And you'll see why as we go through the naming and formula writing process. Now, when we did example 13 way back on an earlier page of these notes, we were asked to name the compound HCl. And we named it as a binary compound, a covalent binary compound, nonmetal to nonmetal, hydrogen chloride. We could have said monohydrogen monochloride, but remember, we can drop mono in covalent compounds. Now, this is true um, only if it's being named as the pure compound hydrogen chloride. The pure compound exists as a gas at room temperature. So the correct formula for hydrogen chloride is technically HCl with this small letter G in parentheses afterwards stating that it's in the gaseous phase. The G indicates the compound exists in the gaseous form. Now, when I take HCl and I bubble it through water and dissolve it in water, the resulting compound is now an acid and the correct notation would be HCl with an AQ after it. The AQ means aqueous and is used to indicate that a substance has been dissolved in water. We're going to use that designation quite a bit for the rest of the year. Remember, AQ means aqueous, which tells us that the substance has been dissolved in water. Now, the name of the compound HCl with an AQ after it is hydrochloric acid. Notice the prefix hydro is used. This prefix is only used when naming a binary acid. The ending of the ion associated with the hydrogen atom is changed to ic. So, let me show you a couple of examples. If I were to name HBr in the gaseous phase, we would use the binary naming system, like we did for covalent compounds. We would simply call it hydrogen bromide. Okay, but if I named HBraq, I would start with the prefix hydro because I recognize it as a binary acid. And this is how I recognize it as a binary acid. It starts with H and it shows the AQ, which means it is dissolved in water. So I'm going to start with hydro. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ending of the ion associated with the hydrogen and change it to ic. So bromine becomes bro. Mick, good job, and that we and then we add acid, so hydrochromic acid. HF with a G after it would be hydrogen fluoride, right? Just like we named our covalent compounds. However, if I dissolve that in water, I notice it's an acid. It starts with H, and it's dissolved in water, so it would be hydro. And then I would take the ion associated with the hydrogen and end its name with ic. So fluoric acid. Okay. I think I have a couple more examples on the next page for you. I think we have H2S with a G after it and H2S with an AQ after it. So with a G, I would call this dihydrogen sulfide. I'd use my covalent rules, non-metal to non-metal. I need to use prefixes. There's more than one, so I have to use uh, the appropriate prefix, in this case, di. Now, if H2S has an AQ after it, I should recognize it as a binary acid. Starts with H, and it's dissolved in water. Boom! I know it's a binary acid. So I begin with hydro. Do not say dihydro. We never said to do that. We just start, we just start it with hydro. The ion associated with the H is sulfur. We change its ending to ic, and it's sulfuric, not sulfic, acid. So hydrosulfuric acid. OK, 
Okay, those are binary acids. You'll see some of those on your homework tonight when we get to assignment 22. All right, ternary acids. Ternary acids are recognized by the general formula HY, where H, once again, is a hydrogen, and it's acting like a metal with a 1 plus charge, and Y is a negative polyatomic ion or a radical. You'll notice that it has oxygen in it almost all the time, so we call them oxyacids. To name these acids, we never start with hydro. You should simply change the ending of the radical, the polyatomic ion, and then say acid. So eight radicals become ic acids, and eight radicals become us acids. Let me show you what I mean. H2CO3. Do you recognize that as a ternary acid or an oxy acid? Starts with hydrogen, and it's attached to a polyatomic ion. The name of that polyatomic ion, CO3, and it's two negative, is carbonate. So the way that we name these is the eight radicals become ic acids. So I call this, instead of carbonate acid, I would call it carbonic acid. So H2CO3 is appropriate call, appropriately called carbonic acid. What about H2SO4? Well, I recognize it as a ternary acid. It starts with H, and it's attached to a polyatomic. The polyatomic SO4 is way down here. Sulfate. Do you see it? Now we change the ending to from an eight to an ick, so that becomes sol. Now this actually we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to say sulfuric, not sulfic acid. So it ends with ick acid. Okay, what about example 21? 8C2H3O2. Well, C2H3O2 is acetate. So what do you think that acid would be called? If you said acetic acid, you've been listening. Very good. Okay, now remember, once again, eight radicals become ic acids. Eight radicals become OUS acids. So let me go back up here and just do another one for fun. What if I had given you H2SO3? Okay, now you recognize it as a ternary acid. Ternary acid starts with H, and it's bonded to a polyatomic ion. Now these don't have to have a Q after them to be considered acids. H2SO3. Well, the SO3's name is sulfite, I-T-E, and ite radicals become O-U-S acids. So this would be called sulfur-us acid. Okay. All right. Now, what if I had to write the formula and I gave you the name? So let's say I start with nitric acid. Notice it does not start with hydro. If it started with hydro kiddos, it would be binary. It doesn't, so I know it's a ternary acid. I know there's an H acting like a metal with a 1 plus charge, and it's attached to a polyatomic ion. Well, what polyatomic ion? Hmm, I wonder. It ends with ic. That means it came from an 8 polyatomic. So nitrate, let's look that up, right there, is NO3 negative 1. So what's the formula going to be? Well, we have an H plus and an NO3 negative 1. We'll need one of each, and that is nitric acid. And we don't need to put an AQ after it, like we do for binary acids. Okay, what about nitrous acid? Once again, I know it's a ternary acid. It does not have hydro in it. So I have a hydrogen acting like a metal with a 1 plus charge, and us, OUS. OUSs come from ite radicals. I'm going to look up nitrite, and let's see if we can find nitrite. Here it is. Nitrite is NO2 negative 1. NO2 negative 1. Once again, one of each, so that bad boy is HNO2, nitrous acid. How about H3PO4? Ternary acid for sure. Starts with hydrogen, and it's bonded to a polyatomic. Do you guys see why we call these oxy acids yet? Did you notice they all have oxygen in them? Did you notice that? So these are often called oxy acids for that reason. Okay, let's get back to it. Uh, H3PO4. PO4 is called, let's see, here it is, phosphate. Now, phosphates become X, or H, excuse me, become its, X. So this is called phosphoric acid. <coughs> okay. All right, 
think we have a couple more examples here. Once again, I hope you guys are pausing and trying these on your own without my help and then coming back to the video and seeing how you did. It's really the best way to learn. Me doing it for you, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty darn good at teaching this stuff, as you well know. But still, you really don't learn it until you begin doing it by yourself, and then you learn it even more if you teach it to somebody else. So maybe uh, you could corral your little brother or sister or mom or dad and say, hey, let me show you how to do this. And then you can check your work with my work on the video. I know, you're not going to do it, I know, but it's, it's an idea. All right, HMNO4, oxy acid, yay, starts with H, bonded to a polyatomic. MNO4, what's its name? Let's see, MNO4 negative, it's called permanganate. So that acid becomes permanganic acid. Okay, how about chloric acid? What's the formula for that going to be? Now, I know it's not binary because it does not start with hydro. It just says chloric. So X come from, think about it, you got it, X come from X. So I'm going to find chlorate. Let's see, there's perchlorate, that's not the one I want. Oh, here's chlorate. There it is. So chlorate is ClO3 negative 1. And of course we have a hydrogen acting like a metal with a 1 plus charge. So H plus and ClO3 negative give us HClO3. Boom. That's my uh, my formula for chloric acid. You got it? It's not too bad. Now, what I'm going to do for you is we're going to go back and do a little bit of our homework now. Um, let's see. But we're, you know what we're going to do in um, assignment 22? I know I did some of that for you the other day. We're going to continue with that before we continue our notes. So let's see what I've done from assignment 22 so far. This comes from video, I believe, number 4 or 3. can't remember where it was. Assignment 22, we did 1, A, B, and I. Huh, I don't know why I did it that way. We did 3, A, C, and H. Okay. So let's do maybe, uh, let's do something else for number 1. Uh, since we did A, B, and I, how about if I do letter C? So this is one letter C from assignment 22. And it wants the formula for sulfurous acid. So I'm not going to name it ionically. I know it's an acid. I'm not going to name it covalently. I know it's an acid. So I'm going to use my acid rules. So what do we think we're going to do here? Sulfurous. Well, it doesn't start with hydro, so I know it's an oxy acid or ternary acid. Where do us acids come from? Yeah, if you said I, you are correct. So sulfurous comes from sulfite. So let's find sulfite way down here on the bottom. It's SO3, 2 negative. SO3, 2 negative. Now to be an acid, of course, it's going to be bonded to a hydrogen that acts like a metal with a 1 plus charge. So H is 1 plus, SO3 is 2 negative. How does H2SO3 sound for sulfurous acid? Got it? Good. All right. What about letter J? Number one, J wants the formula for hydrogen chloride. Now, that's not an acid, is it? It would say acid after it if it was. It's not. So hydrogen chloride, that means it's a nonmetal to a nonmetal. We're going to use our covalent rules. There's one hydrogen and one chlorine because there are no prefixes, so it's just HCl. Now, that could be confused with an acid. So what should I put after it so people reading it do not recognize it as a binary acid? If you said G, good for you. You were listening earlier. All right, let's take a look at some from number two. Now let me see what we did on number two already. No, we didn't do any from number two. So let's pick two letter, oh, let's do F. Okay, letter F is hydrofluoric acid. You're going to say, oh, Hummer, I wish you wouldn't have done that one. We just did that in our notes, didn't we? Well, I'll do it twice for you. Do you recognize that as binary? How did you recognize it as binary? If you said, hey, it starts with hydro, that means it's binary. That means there's two elements in it, one of which is hydrogen, acting like a metal with a one plus charge, the other must be fluorine. 
And you know fluorine in group 17 is negative 1. So the formula for that binary acid is HF. What would I put in parentheses? So a person reading this would recognize this as a binary acid, not a binary compound. If you said AQ, good for you. That's correct. Okay. All right. Let's jump down and do some from number three. Now, I'm just going to go for a few more seconds. We're running out of time today. I've done A, C, and H on number three. Let me do on number three, letter J. Okay, so this is number three from your homework. Letter J. It says HClO2. Do you recognize that as an acid? Do you recognize that as an oxy acid? It starts with H and it's bonded to a polyatomic ion. It's an oxy acid. So we're going to name it as an acid. So let's see. To name that, we have to see what H is bonded to. ClO2. Let's find that guy. ClO2. There it is. It's called the chlorite ion. So chlorite. Ites become uses. So we call that chlorous acid. Okay. One more. We're going to go extra long today. Let's do, looking at number three again. Um, oh, here we go. Letter F. TB parentheses NO34. Now, that's a metal and that's a polyatomic ion. So we're going to use our ionic naming system. TB is terbium. It needs Roman numerals. NO3 is called nitrate. Now, what's the charge of terbium? Well, you guys should know how to do this by now. We've done gobs of these. Nitrate is NO3, negative 1. Let's find it. Nitrate, NO3, negative 1. And there are four of them. That means I have four negatives. Do your math. That makes terbium four positive. So that means the Roman numeral four goes there. You guys okay with this? We have lots more to do. I believe there are 39 or 40 of these to do on assignment 22. I believe I've probably done about a dozen for you. So I've given you a good running start at it. Okay? Have a great day. I hope you've learned uh, something. Go back and review this. Like I said, honestly, the best way to learn this is first doing it by yourself, practicing and seeing how you did. And then if you really want to learn it, try teaching it to, to someone else. Have a great day. Bye-bye.